scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good evening, Enugu State. Jesus is Lord over this state. And we know that he will do mighty things tonight in Jesus' name. Please, while standing, help me appreciate the man of God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Edwin. Thank you. Thank you. And my salutations to all the men and women of God in this place. And to the secretary, to the state government. God bless you and every other person here represented. All protocols duly observed. May the Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Can we lift our hands to heaven tonight and cry for a visitation? I saw so many people outside. I was really very humbled by the hunger, the desire. Several people just lifting hands to bless the Lord. Go ahead and let's bless him. Asking that he would give us a very mighty visitation tonight. When God brings the people together, it is because he wants to give them encounters to give them visitations let your cry reach the heavens for everyone that asketh receiveth father in the name of jesus we pray that you will visit us tonight let your word come with power. Let it impart upon us. Indeed, that we will soar in the spirit to new heights, new realms, new dimensions. And to you be all the praise for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You may please be seated. You may please be seated. Remains an honor to bring the word of the Lord to us. Um, I believe that the only way people rise to become a full expression of God's intent for them is when they place value on the Word of God. It is the Word that makes, it is the Word that builds. John chapter 1 from verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2 says, The same was in the beginning with God. And verse 3 says, all things were made through him. And it says, without him, outside of his participation, was not anything made that was made. Hallelujah. So when a man prays, God lift me, he answers by sending his word. When a man says, I am tired of this situation, God answers by sending his word. Hallelujah. And I want to beseech that we pay attention to the word of God because remember, the Bible tells us in the parable of the sower that the seed that was barren, unfruitful were those who heard, but that the word did not profit them. They did not allow the word to rest upon the soils of their heart. Hallelujah. And then even among those that fell on good ground, the Bible says it produced three kinds of harvest, 30-fold, 60-fold, and a hundredfold hallelujah we're going to be discussing something in line with your theme and 
my heart has been stirred in the last few months as God has granted me the grace to travel across the nations I've been calling people <clears throat> first into deeper experiences with God the Bible says the remnant of the house of Jacob will bear root downwards and then will bear fruit upwards hallelujah and so it's been a burden to call people to a deeper richer more intentional experience with God because the God you know is the God you reveal to your world hallelujah you cannot reveal to your world a God who is still a theoretical reality and then number two to help God's people come into a greater comprehension of the ways of God I think that many believers are not necessarily in ignorance but there are a lot of gaps as far as our spiritual understanding is concerned and so we find well-intentioned believers who desire to rise to thrive and to soar hallelujah but then because they do not have the requisite level of spiritual knowledge they are stunted they are kept and left defeated and like you may have heard your victory and your fruitfulness is very important as far as revealing the glory of God is concerned no believer can truly reveal the glory of God if your life is barren and unfruitful the Bible says herein is our father glorified John 15 8 when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples hallelujah yes it's important for us to know that when we challenge believers to rise to their full prophetic potential it's beyond just becoming a man of God or becoming a wealthy person or becoming a successful person it is that in your rising you give God an opportunity for his glory to be seen are we together now I'm standing right here because I am on land no matter how good my vision is I will not be able to see beyond the scope of this building am I right on that because of the limitation of where I'm standing from but how many of you know that all of us here if there is a plane that is flying in the air from your location right where you are all of us have the opportunity to see it because of the advantage of height altitude so when God desires to be seen across the nations what he does is to announce himself by lifting those who bear his name you find that in John 17 Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed a very serious prayer he said father the hour has come verse 1 he says glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so the way God is glorified is that he invests his power his wisdom his grace upon the saints and then he will announce them to the nations are we together now yeah this is what he said in Matthew 5 and verse 16 he says let your light so shine are we together already before men he doesn't want it to shine before spirits before men that they may see your good deeds he says and by so doing glorify your father so if you say Lord I love you and you refuse to rise you are a hypocrite because one of the ways that you prove that you love him is your desperation to make him known and that the only way to make him known is that there is a dimension of glory and excellence that must emanate from your life hallelujah I have challenged the body of Christ again that we need to redefine the kind of Jesus we are presenting to the nations that there is a presentation of Jesus that will be rejected by a generation because it is not a holistic capture of his power his grace and his wisdom when you sell a product if you discover that the person marketing that product is marketing a fake product or a product that is already used or a product that is far short of what he's saying that is fraud isn't it and there are laws within a land that maintain quality and standardized products and you can report such a person and say you are marketing something that is substandard this is how the Christian faith before now has been 
and God is bringing us into a greater level of spiritual understanding so that we don't whet the appetite of people by proposing things about Jesus we cannot defend for instance we say he lifts for instance we say he can turn a man's life around and we we create the picture of the fig tree and many will run to say look I've tried for 50 years for 100 years to find a solution and we say Jesus is able a more superior alternative to witchcraft a more superior alternative to using charms and then they come then they are disappointed when Jesus saw the fig tree that kept marketing its ability without fruit he didn't spare it he cursed it that is how determined Jesus is as a reflection of God's idea to see fruitfulness the very first instruction man heard was not evangelize the very first instruction man heard was be fruitful hallelujah every other thing finds its value in your life if and when you become fruitful I'm saying this to prepare your heart that in a conference like this many things happen one God you know begins to birth a hunger within you first to know him and to know him correctly because there is a way God designed that he be known when it has to do with the knowledge of God you do not invent your strategy for knowing him there is a predefined path that if you follow you will know God in a way that will make the nations praise him in your life and if you use another route in your pursuit of God you will meet with many things for instance familiar spirits for instance error for instance imbalance there is a way God designed for men to know him just like there is a way to becoming a doctor so if a young child says I want to become a doctor you don't tell him well go to the chemist get an injection get a stethoscope and um, put some zinc together and begin to practice no there is a predefined pathway with all due respect there are people we call quack doctors what makes them quack it's not like they are ill-formed biologically but they violated the due process Am I, am I right on that? So they are claiming titles that have not been proven. There are many believers that are like that. So we propose a lot of things about God and we are not even sure of it ourselves. Yet we preach about, our, about that. We write books about it. And then when the world now challenges us to say, okay, now that you have called me, I have come. What can he do? And then we say, I'm not sure, too honestly. While I was asking you to come, I was busy verifying it myself because I don't have an experience. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. I like that. To be persuaded means to be convinced beyond doubt that you have come to a point where it has become a set, a settled reality. When you say God can shift nations, you are not bringing theory. You prove it with your life. The things that we have seen, he says, the things that we have heard, the things that we have handled. And you see, the thing about people is that they know who to take serious and they know who to just throw away and know that you are just wasting my time. But then they know, they use your experience and the proof that you have. The most effective way to preach the gospel is to have the message and your evidence. Did you hear what I said? The most effective way to preach the gospel is to have the message and and your evidence whichever you use to start the preaching will still work amen so it is my belief that at the end of this conference you will not just have notes on your paper no you came to get more than notes it is my desire and prayer and wish and hope that at the end of this conference it will not just be that you type something in your phone as a testament that you came but that at the end of it there is a, a smearing a, a glory that you will carry that you will not have to tell men you came they will ask you where did you go to because I see in your life there is a spiritual souvenir you carried from this place most people don't tell others I went for an occasion no there is designed by the people within the feast is a souvenir is that true the assignment of a souvenir is that you take something back 
that extends your rejoicing you let the people know i attended this wedding i attended this birthday party usually the object of focus is the person whose picture is in the souvenir so that the whole nation will know that this person celebrated his birthday today so there should be a spiritual souvenir the wisdom that you carry the power that comes upon your life that your fear is eroded through the abundance of light that you receive this is what conferences are meant for you shouldn't be as afraid as you are now after the conference you are allowed to come as you are but if you go as you are you return back you did not meet God are we together you have a responsibility to insist that you do not go back the way you came it is your responsibility are we together now i can set a table with a buffet of several delicacies but i cannot force you to eat i can only present it to you so you take responsibility by taking your plate am i right on that and then you begin to serve and in most buffets you are at liberty to even select little of everything there are those who see it as an opportunity to taste everything even if you don't know what it is you add it and you learn by experience so don't be surprised when you see a dimension that is foreign to your christian experience it's part of the provisions on the buffet yours is to receive and say i've never seen god move in this fashion however it is an opportunity to now learn that there can be more do you believe this so far this is my introduction now you lay your hands on your head and start praying father I have come for this conference I pray in the name of Jesus are you laying your hands on your head your head is a symbol of your glory go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus I declare let light come from heaven someone who is tired of where you are someone who is tired of remaining at the same level in ministry in business in leadership I like you to pray prayer in one minute pray prayer in one minute the hymn writer says Lord take me to higher ground you can soar you can soar you can rise to a new altitude in the spirit John said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day one minute are you praying amen so let me encourage you please will not take long we're just introducing the conference and i intend to cooperate with pastor to ensure that we have a good time and then we live on time but i every time i prepare for conferences especially in recent time my prayer is really not for myself my prayer is for the people because many people do not know how to receive from meetings like this they come from morning till evening they dance they jump but when the word comes the spirit of distraction comes they start thinking i would have made profits now i would have made maybe twenty thousand, and all those things are distractions from the pit of hell because one word from god that is understood received by faith can turn your life around breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life i receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorified i'm teaching tonight on what i title emmanuel 
we are going to be looking at a two-part series Emmanuel this is part one and then tomorrow night we'll look at part two Emmanuel part one the evidence of his presence part one we're going to be discussing the evidence of his presence how do I know he is with me how do I know I have met him Emmanuel part one now according to scripture there are three dimensions of God that can be revealed to a people and I hope you know that in learning God it is important that we respect the authority of scripture that scripture becomes our compass it limits us to learning God in a way that we do not delve into error if we do not have the coordinates of scripture chances are excellent that we'll find ourselves delving into various shades of error and so as we explore the knowledge of the person God it is important that we remain within the boundary of scripture are we together so the Bible reveals to us that there are three dimensions of God as far as experiencing his presence is concerned number one is called his omnipresence his omnipresence it's a term used to describe the ability of God to be everywhere so God is everywhere he does not have to move to see he does not have to move to establish his presence the Bible says the fullness of him that fills all omnipresence the psalmist said it beautifully where can I hide from your presence he says if I go to Hades the place of the dead you are there I rise to the top of the mountain you are there so it is important to know that God is omnipresent in fact theologically speaking in as much as it is true that we are partakers of his divine nature it's important for us to know and appreciate that there are certain dimensions of God's nature he did not share with man did you get that now the idea that everything God has he gave man is not theologically correct there are things that God has that he did not give man for instance God did not give man the opportunity to experience omnipresence men are not omnipresent God did not give man the opportunity to experience omniscience man is not all-knowing we see in part and we prophesy in part number three God did not give man the opportunity to be omnipotent our power and authority is derived is derived from a relationship and it can be increased and it can decrease are we together this ability to be omnipresent to be omnipotent and to be omniscient is what brands God in a class all by himself this part of his attribute he did not share with man so when the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature that is a fact but it's important for us to have spiritual intelligence to know that he did not share his omnipresence his omnipotence and his omniscience with man are we together very important so we're talking about three dimensions of God's presence that number one is his omnipresence number two is called his Emmanuel dimension I call it his Emmanuel dimension the Bible says where two or three are gathered provided it is in my name he leaves us with an assurance that is beyond the realm of feeling that you can be sure that if you are gathered in my name I am there hallelujah Bible says the Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs now that Emmanuel dimension has nothing to do with feelings it is a consciousness that is based on God's integrity he says the moment you are gathered in my name whether you feel like it or not you can trust the one speaking to you that I am there hallelujah and he proved that when the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fiery furnace remember that and as soon as they got in there they saw one who looked like the son of man this was the king's own description I saw the fourth one and his face was like the son of God so God can be with men and then number three 
is called his Shekinah, his manifest presence. His manifest presence where he is there and he causes all who are there to know that he is there. His Shekinah relates with your senses, relates not just with your spirit. When God comes and reveals his manifested presence, everything within your tripartite nature will know and acknowledge. There are attesting manifestations that remind you and show you and convince you for some that he is there. Hallelujah. Are we together? So his omnipresence, his dimension with his people, Emmanuel, and then his Shekinah, his manifested presence. So we're discussing the subject of Emmanuel, helping us to understand what it means for God to be with a man. Hallelujah. Now, again, from a theological standpoint, the entire Old Testament was a revelation of God walking with his people and backing them. We call it God for us. Are we together? In the Old Testament, they did not have the liberty of having a personal relationship with God. There were mediums through prophets and priests who related versions of God to them. Are we together? So whatever the people told them God was or God did or God was doing, they had to make do with the knowledge of God from the lens of prophets and priests. Are we together now? So you can see that there were many things that the prophet said about God and the priest said about God that now from the lens of Jesus, we know that those guys were wrong. We have a right to judge their perceptions because Jesus came. Among the many reasons why Jesus came was he came as a marking script to correct our prior understanding about God as revealed through the lens of the prophets and so on and so forth. Are we together? You will read very controversial statements in the Bible like a lying spirit came from God and several other things. Now we know and Paul helped us to have that understanding that we see in part and we prophesy in part. So not everything those prophets said about God, they were humans. They made mistakes. They saw based on their limitations. Are we together now? Yes. So God for us. Jesus now shows up and that is God walking in the midst of his people. He was never called Emmanuel. Emmanuel was not just his name. It was a description of a face of his operation. God now dwelling in the midst of the people. The Bible says the word became flesh. Is that true? And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Even as of the begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. So Jesus came as God incarnate. He came as the logos of God, the thoughts of God, the mind of God in motion. Everything that God was doing or thinking was captured in the life of Jesus. Are we together now? And then he made a very interesting statement to the disciples. He began to talk about the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. That when the Holy Spirit comes, he was telling them that he will not just walk with them, but he will be in them. This was a mystery they could not understand. Hallelujah. There were a few mysteries that were difficult for them to understand. One was the mystery of eternal life. That even a learned colleague like Nicodemus, being a Pharisee, could not understand. Do I enter my mother's womb again? It was Paul who came and gave us a thorough understanding of that mystery. Are we still together? So I want to read three scriptures and then we connect what we are discussing tonight. The evidence of his presence. A lot of people talk about God and our idea about God is that God is some deity somewhere with all power, yes. Some deity somewhere with all glory, but can he be known? And is it true that God can walk with men? The closest expression to partnership with God in our generation today is known through the practice of idolatry unfortunately idolatry has been the most potent practice that seems to reveal how a deity can work closely with an individual so people go to practice idolatry and they have mediums that they build are we together and they carry them along 
or they have individuals who act as mediums and so they can midwife between the realm of the invisible and this realm they can tell you this idol is angry with you and is asking you to bring this that is the closest expression of the layman's knowledge of god working with a man so the average person is not in doubt as to the fact that the supernatural can and does partner with the natural but how and to what degree most people do not know if you meet someone now and say an idol has said bring a goat he would like that that is not news we have been we have seen that through the practice cultural practices and the rest it's not new so the average person is not really doubting the fact that god or any divine spirit or entity are we together can quantize himself to come and dwell in the world of men and even relate with men but you see the way idols relate is not the way god relates and it's important for us to know this is why god is helping us to know this and for tonight i'm helping you see the evidence of his presence how do i know god is with me because you have to verify his presence before you begin your journey to destiny as you will be learning there are many things in destiny who will not ask you about you they will ask you about the one walking with you that becomes your passcode to continuity if you must advance in life and destiny you will get to a point where gates for instance will ask you by whose permission do you want us to open and at that point you will not mention the name of the school you went to unfortunately you may not mention the name of your tribe it might not suffice to make that gate open you will need to mention the name of the one who has who is backing you remember moses if I stand before Pharaoh, who shall I tell him has sent me? The question is not the reality of being sent. Pharaoh will believe, but who? Which of the gods now? Are we together? Are you ready for three scriptures? Exodus chapter 33. Let's read 14 to 16. Be patient with me as we read these scriptures. If you are learning already, say amen. Amen. Exodus 33 14 to 16 and he said that he being God himself my presence will go with you ah, and I will give you rest let's let's not touch this one we'll come to it later on there are certain things that you can only find in God's presence an intelligent person has already seen one of them that this thing called rest is not the cessation of movement it's a realm when we say a man has entered rest it's like entering a room it doesn't mean in physics rest means the absence of motion are we, are we together now that means that there is no distance being covered with time again you call it rest but rest in the spirit is not the absence of motion it's a realm where you have entered endless possibilities and the bible says there is such a thing and it comes as a gift if for any reason a man can secure god's presence among the many souvenirs you carry and present to destiny is rest hmm. hallelujah but this is not where we are going let me not rush ahead of myself and so moses said to him if your presence does not go with us do not bring us up from here a man is willing to suffer delay provided the presence of God is not with him what did Moses understand that delay becomes preferable to motion that a man can say I rather be accused of experiencing delay it is more profitable that means without the presence of God delay is even more profitable than taking a step without him because a man who is not moving and the one who is moving without God the Bible is saying the one who remained there will have less casualty than the one who even started moving without the presence of God back to our scripture do not bring us up from here next verse 16 now let's read together how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight this is another souvenir that comes with his presence it's not just rest that there are things that you can carry that when people look for it they will know that ShopRite did not give you this one they will know that you did not get this in the university there are certain products that only reside in his presence and that if you find men with them you will know where they got it from one of it is favor 
grace except you go with us so shall we be separate your people and I from all the people who are upon the earth are we learning already can I give you the second scripture scripture number two hmm. Judges chapter 6 let's start from verse 1 I like us to look at the story of a young man who would later become a mighty warrior begin our reading from verse 1 lend me your attention and please be patient as I rush through it the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord so the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Midianites for seven years verse 2 and the hand of the Midian prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites the children of Israel made for themselves the dens the caves and strongholds which are in the mountains uh-huh so it was whenever Israel had sown the Midianites would come up and the Amalekites would come up against them can you imagine this verse 4 then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no substance for Israel neither sheep nor ox nor donkey what oppression for they would come up with their livestock and their tents this was just bully just bully these guys they would go to farm and their enemies will come to oppress them but let's go to verse 6 verse 6 now it said so Israel as a result was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord watch this now and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord because of the Midianites uh -huh, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them thus saith the Lord God of Israel I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land also I said to you I am the Lord your God do not fear the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell but you have not obeyed my voice now the angel of the Lord came and sat under a terebinth tree which was in Ophrah which belonged to Joash and then while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press now the story begins 12 and the angel of the Lord appeared and said unto him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said unto him, Oh my Lord, this is a lie. Don't tell me God is with me. Tell me God is alive. But don't bring him close to me because there is no evidence in my life. Are we together now? The, the issue of Gideon was that there has to be an evidence. How can you come and begin to salute me and then among the many things you tell me is that the Lord is with you I appreciate your salutation but I do not receive that part that the Lord is with me why if the Lord is with us why then has all this happened to us if it is true that the Lord is with me and if he's as mighty as he says he is why then has all this happened to me and where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about saying did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites the last verse now and the Lord turned to him and said go in this might you know what that what is the might there is a revelation that he got that if God is truly with a man some things should not be within your vicinity he said you have caught a revelation that can turn you to a warrior go with this might insist on my presence and with it you will defeat the Midianites scripture number three Luke chapter 24 from verse 13 the Lord grant us grace Luke 24 from verse 13 the Bible talks let me just rush a bit about the, the fools the full reading is from 13 down to 32 I just want to cut out a few portions for the sake of time so the Bible tells us that there were two men who traveled along the street called Emmaus are we together and the Bible says they began to discuss and they were talking about what had happened a few days the death of Jesus 
and a stranger came in their midst is that in your bible and that stranger was joining the conversation jesus himself now came emmanuel and while he was talking there was no effect on them because they did not understand in fact they were rebuking him and said are you a stranger in this land you mean all the stories that have happened this is the headline of the news and you are in this level of ignorance and he said tell me and then they began to listen and whilst he spoke and they spoke the bible says that he spoke to them and said oh you are foolish understanding and slow to learn is it not written in scripture that this and that and then from Moses he began to expound to themselves through scripture the things written concerning him go to verse 29 please for sake of time Luke 24 29 the Bible says they constrained him look what happened now at this point they did not know it was the resurrected Jesus they constrained him and said, I don't know who you are, but your presence is producing an effect in our lives. From the time you began to discuss with us, we've not been the same. What is it about you? Can you stay with us? Do you carry a stranger and constrain him to remain in your house? That is what happens when God is really with you. These guys did not know that it was Jesus, yet they could not deny the effect of his presence. And the Bible says, he decided to stay with them. So Jesus stays with anyone who gives him space. Yeah. You give him space and you make your house honorable enough for him. That house being you. Not just your house. You. Next verse. 20, 30 now. It came to pass as he sat at table with them. I like this. The Bible says he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave to them. If you're a Christian, shout verse 31. One to read. And their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished look at their testament the next verse you are still reading read 32 ready one to read and they said to one another did not our heart born within us Emmanuel for you he walked with Jesus even though they did not know it was Jesus, the effect of his presence, notwithstanding, something was burning within their heart. What kind of a man are you? You are beyond a journalist. You are, be, you are not, we can't call you a scribe, a Pharisee. You expounded scripture. The Bible says when he broke bread, their eyes were open. They suddenly realized that all the while, that stranger was Jesus. And the Bible says he vanished. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do a little discussion in the area of medical science. There are diseases that are called communicable diseases. Am I right on that? Refresher course for some of you. So there are diseases that are called communicable diseases. That means they have a possibility of being transferred under certain conditions from person to person. Am I right on that? And then there are some called airborne diseases. And there are some called waterborne diseases. As much as I remember. Am I right on that? That means that these are diseases that are enhanced by proximity. Please follow carefully. That for instance, if someone has a flu, and under normal circumstances and humanly speaking I come and stand close to that person I don't need to know him I may not even need to speak with him are we together that just by reason of proximity there is a possibility that something from that man can be transferred to me and while that is happening I may not even be conscious of the transference until I return home and I find out that there's a flu, I'm feeling nauseated, what could be wrong? And then you remember that you stood close to someone who was coughing, we call that airborne. COVID started from one small location on earth. You know how far the earth is apart from one another? That is the power of transference. That something can start, we were told, somewhere in Asia am I right on that and from that place ladies and gentlemen it got to your village no internet 
no connection it didn't come through the airways like internet and yet it located people and people died in every nation as evidence of the presence of covid show me covid nobody could carry covid like this physically to say this is it and yet from one nation scientists were forced to study this strange phenomena and it began to move finding every avenue that as people travel they carried it sometimes without knowing but not knowing did not stop its movement they just saw mass deaths and sicknesses to the point that scientists had to study the evidence that attests to the presence of covid that means they had to publish it to help us we had to start using the evidence of covid to test it so when you see certain signs you don't now wonder and say but i did not travel it has still found you and you quickly look for a solution am i right on that something that could not talk something that could not enter a plane something that does not speak english yet it forced everybody on earth to respect his presence we went out of the way to study the evidences like flu like covid there are evidences that attest to the fact that a man has met god now there are two things i intend to discuss i'll take one what happens when men encounter god when it has to do with the presence of god it's a broad study number one is when a man finds god and then number two is when god backs a man all of them are presence related but the effects are not the same are we together now yes when men encounter god something happens to them in that encounter it is his presence but there is an effect to that dimension of encounter versus when god now decides to come and back a man most believers do not know this and so in pursuit for god's presence they do not know what to expect they do not know what to press for hallelujah there are two biblical encounters in scripture that are a template for us to study what happens when men encounter God a man can encounter the God of the universe and that in that encounter when you really meet with God there are certain things that must be evident in your life hallelujah two references I'll give you we may not have the time to read them but number one is found in Isaiah chapter 6 the first eight verses of Isaiah chapter 6 my Bible your Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died is that in your Bible it says I Isaiah saw the Lord so a man can encounter God a man can come to a place where God is that privilege and that possibility exists in the dealings of God with men that men can through hunger through their press they can find God they can find his presence in in the year that King Uzziah died I Isaiah saw the Lord and the Bible says he saw him sitting on a throne and the train of his robe filled the temple now watch this the bible says there stood a seraphim and he began to describe everything that he saw around the throne room but the high point of that encounter was when one of the seraphs the bible says took a live coal is that in your bible that one of the seraphs took a live coal and came and touched the lips of isaiah who was already a prophet and here's what he said by this impartation your iniquity is taken away from you and then there was a call who shall I send and who shall go for us and Isaiah now used the purified lips to say here am I send me men can encounter God and that when a man finally finds God there are certain evidences of his presence that must be in your life hallelujah we live in a world today where especially the christian experience in africa unfortunately we pride over encounters prophetic encounters 
there are several people with all due respect even in the ministry who are under pressure you are seldom respected in our world uh spiritually speaking if you do not give people an impression like you have almost unlimited access to the realm of the spirit so our our spiritual credentials seem to be enhanced on the strength of encounters if i'm here right now and i tell you oh i'm in your house or i'm seeing something whether right or wrong whether fake or real is not the issue but that your perception about me is doctored immediately to my advantage because i mentioned the realm of the spirit and that i can access it now there are many people who have claimed going to heaven there are many people who have claimed seeing jesus or seeing angels or all kinds of encounters that are presence related but there are certain evidences that the bible puts in black and white that when a man encounters god it does not matter how you were before that encounter that if it is the god of the bible you meet there are certain things that cannot remain the same one of it we saw in prophet isaiah you would think because he was a prophet he would be spared when he encountered the god of the bible watch this now a live coal a live coal came and touched his lips and i hope you know it is out of the abundance of the hearts that the mouth speaks you would think god would say prophet congratulations you are a great man you've been prophesying you've been doing well let me give you a greater message but the moment he encountered god the concern of God was purifying something within his life. The second encounter is found in Acts chapter 9. A very strange but intelligent Pharisee. I hope you know that when Philip was being stoned to death, that Pharisee was part of those who supervised the death of Philip. The name of that man would later be called Apostle Paul. In Acts chapter 9, the Bible says that he had obtained letters from the high priest and he was on his way to Damascus are we Bible students now to continue his passionate journey of persecuting the church verse 3 as he journeyed and came near Damascus hallelujah the Bible says suddenly a light shone from heaven watch this verse 4 it says he fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Then said the Lord to him, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. And then he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Do you see a change of heart happening? A man who was on his way to persecute people, suddenly he has an encounter with the God of the Bible and his mission becomes altered immediately. His passions became altered immediately. Ladies and gentlemen, something always happens to men when men meet God. Nothing changes about God when you meet him, but everything must change about you when you meet him. God is not improved when you meet him. God does not become wiser when you meet him. God does not become holier when you meet him. Your meeting God is not an advantage to him whatsoever. But when men encounter God, ladies and gentlemen, there are many things that must happen to them. But I want to just pick one of it. Brokenness and total surrender is the signature of a man's encounter with God. That when men encounter God, when this Emmanuel dimension is revealed, the most valid evidence I wrote here of an encounter with God is a changed heart. The most valid evidence is not a prophetic impartation. There is a dimension of an encounter with God that translates to empowerment. When men meet God, it is not empowerment that starts. It is the, a change, a total change of your heart. Tell me you have met the God of the Bible. I will verify your experience, not by looking for anointing, not by looking for knowledge. Show me your heart before and after. If your heart before and after remains the same, 
you met a familiar spirit or you met something that looks like God but not the God of the Bible that even when unbelievers encountered a person whose name they did not know provided it was God their hearts were not spared do you see in all of these expressions that when Emmanuel shows up the first thing he's looking for is not your mind the first thing he's looking for is your heart your entire life becomes useful to God only when he has access to your heart believers learn this we are giving God our money and that is important. We are giving God our songs. That is important. We are giving God our cars. We are giving God several things. But the one thing that he needs, when men meet God, what he looks for is their heart. When he met with the prophet, he never called him prophet. It is your heart. I want to cleanse your heart and cleanse your lips. When he met Saul, the first thing he, the area he went to was his heart. Did our hearts not burn within us? Ladies and gentlemen, a changed heart. The Bible calls it a broken and a contrite spirit. Is the most biblical evidence of a man meeting God. A man finding God. You are allowed to come as you are provided you have not seen him but the moment he shows up something about his presence goes straight to your heart you can come as an idol worshiper you can come listen if we do not restore this number one we will keep having false encounters that we call god encounters and you find people with all due respect who say i have met god and i know god and when you look at their hearts you will know that it's not the god of the bible they met whether you are stubborn or not whether you are anointed or not whether you are intelligent or not the one thing that will not be spared in your life if you meet the God of the Bible is your heart there is no guarantee you will return from that experience with an impartation that is a later part but one thing you can have as a souvenir that if you encounter God you must go back with it and serve the nations is a changed heart something about your heart must come under arrest when the God of heaven shows up do you know why I'm teaching you this many times in church with all due respect we sing songs and we call it charging the atmosphere we shout and we say Lord we welcome you come into our midst and we do not know at what point he comes we hear people cry we see others roll and at the end of it we leave and the most biblical evidence of his presence is not seen in people that tells me that many of the times we say he showed up he really did not come because sincerely ladies and gentlemen if the god of the bible shows up in your life he doesn't need to ask you if you want to be a christian that is not going to be his mission go and read the bible he never met anyone and said keep practicing what you want to practice but just meet him once you meet him there will be a permanent alteration to your life did you not read in your bible when jacob met god is it not in your bible when jacob met god he left with an evidence everybody knew that this man had met god how about moses what turned him to be the meekest man on earth a man who killed an Egyptian and ran away now has the title of the meekest man on earth because he met the God of the Bible Africa has about the most vocal passion for spirituality that I'm aware of almost every day something is happening spiritually speaking in Nigeria and Africa and we have sincere believers we flock to church we flock for conferences and all kinds of programs but the evidence if they ask you where are you going to you say I'm going to spend some time with God but the evidence the one the signature evidence is usually not there sometimes we return with songs where did you learn this from we say in the presence of God sometimes we return with gifts physical gifts you mean your church was so kind to have given you meals during the and, and they carry all those things 
but the one thing that proves you met God many people do not have it unfortunately including those who come out for altar calls hallelujah I can tell you the reason why territories are not transformed I can tell you the reason why many people are not able to host the power of God and host the grace of God to a dimension that compels the nations to see him the reason is not that you did not fast the reason is not that you are not praying that heart condition no man escapes it when you are working with God I can tell you there are requirements if you want to be used by God number one if there is only one thing God has to do in your life that surgical operation within your heart hallelujah Emmanuel when God shows up most of what we want to give him is our sickness our pain and say Lord thank you for coming please come and solve this problem for me my family has not been doing well and don't don't make a mistake of thinking that God does not want to step into those areas but I can tell you in order of priority if Jesus were to appear here physically while you are presenting your family needs he will move past your hand and the first thing he wants is your heart your heart your heart there is something that when he does to your heart ladies and gentlemen every other thing in your life will start respecting you the disobedience that comes from elemental forces they are not disobeying you there is a state of heart they were designed to obey and respect and since you do not have it they will not respect you when principalities and powers come you can shout and say I'm a Christian but there is a state of heart it's like a software if they do not find it you can say Satan I cast you they are going nowhere that's why we keep making a mockery of our Christian experience ladies and gentlemen when you want to take matters seriously you say it is the heart of the matter am I right on that the heart of the matter means if you have been distracted before now lend your destiny your rapt attention because if you miss out on that one every other thing will not make sense the heart of the believers journey is not empowerment the heart of the believers journey is not enlightenment the heart of the believers journey is that purging and that transformations that happens when you meet the God of the Bible when Emmanuel shows up ladies and gentlemen no matter who you are you see when the heart is checked flesh pride lost all the things that are I hope you know that those things are powered centrally from the heart many of the things we are binding and casting draw their life from the state of your heart the life that powers the flesh is the heart condition of his victim did you hear what I said the impotency of spiritual power the the strength of demonic forces they are powered ultimately by the state of the heart of the victim no matter what kind of prayer you pray please listen to me no matter what kind of bible study you do if you do not disengage by a change of heart i assure you your conditions will not change we change every other thing but the one thing that needs to be changed change location your life will not change change clothes your life will not change move to another field of study your life may not change but let your heart change you will watch everything around you because the central the central control system in your life and destiny listen to me ladies and gentlemen is your heart behind a man of power is not just oil on his head that oil is like a clock without a battery it will not work the heart of man is what powers everything in his life Are we together what was the problem with the rich fool was it his money it could not have been his money why was he called a rich fool because wealth and foolishness does not go hand in hand you need wisdom to even be wealthy now Jesus calls a man a rich fool the foolishness of that man was his heart condition he said my soul find rest on this are we together 
when I began to walk with God, the Lord told me that the secret to the revelation of the glory of God upon the life of a man, I am telling you, beyond fasting, beyond prayer, beyond wanting to announce yourself, is to lie down on that spiritual surgical table. The Bible calls, it said, I beseech you brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. When that great physician, I hope you know he's not just called a great physician because he heals. He's called a great physician because he's a great surgeon. That when he gets into that surgery room, there is something he does. He opens up that heart and my goodness, you see the kind of content in that heart the bitterness and the anger and all the things that have empowered altars you have fasted and prayed and in the middle of the fasting the spirit still appear to you you are shouting jesus jesus and they are not leaving it's a message their presence is telling you that there is a central control room within you that keeps giving us life listen for those of you who are medical practitioners in dealing with cancer patients there are recent technologies where they trace the veins and the arteries. Am I, am I right on that? I don't know what they call it, forgive me. But I know that they try to trace the artery that supplies the blood because that cancer cell also depends on something. And that they trace it and block it as a way of dealing with it. So that while they are dealing with it, it does not spread. Are we together? I can tell you why the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is very powerless. There is no time in history where men fast and pray as it is now. I can tell you, if it is fasting, we are fasted and we are fasting. If it's prayer, there is no time that knowledge has been so abundant in the body of Christ. Type anything spiritual and put enter on YouTube. Something will come out. Spirituality is at its highest level. And yet we are not able to experience the power, the glory, the grace that these experiences were supposed to bring. You know why? Because in the economy of God, the heart condition of a man is the central control room. I'm handing you a very big key tonight. The heart of a man, not the size of your Bible, not your speaking. You can speak all the oratory and the English, Greek and Hebrew. They are only supporting systems. The deadness of the state of your heart can paralyze anything, even if it's your, a correct spiritual activity. When I learned this mystery of the heart, I started crying and saying, God, let the weight of your glory rest upon me. And I'm not looking for anointing among the many parts it must go to is my heart because the heart of man is desperately wicked not even the owner knows what is there that you the owner of the heart cannot know what is there because there are things that are locked up in your heart that can only be revealed when you have money if you don't have money you will not know it is there there are things that are locked up that will only be revealed when you are educated are we together there are things locked up in your heart that will only be revealed when you have children. If you don't have children, you will think you are free from it. There are things locked up in your heart that only age will make it show up. So before you make a casualty out of your own life, when God comes to you, no matter how clean you think you are, he says, lie down. I know you want to hold a mic as a preacher, but the way I train preachers is not to give them a mic. I come as a great physician and I say, lie down. You are coming from a family with 100 years of wickedness. Do you think just because you gave your life to Christ, everything has gone? You are not married yet. You don't know what it means to want to slap your wife one day. Lie down. Before you do it 10 years later on. You don't know what it means to be lied upon. And then you feel like reacting. Lie down and let me walk upon your heart. Can I tell you? The day God starts calling on your heart. That is the day power has started looking for you. Not the day you finish your fast. Not the day you learn a new song. Not the day you are ordained as a man of God. The day God starts doing a discussion of heart 
know that there is a weight that has left heaven and is looking for your destiny I can tell you this by the authority of scripture and I can tell you this by experience the hardest journey to the belief in the believers life is the journey from where you are to that surgical table did you hear what I said from where you are to that spiritual surgical table where you now lie down and say father I don't know who I am or they call me a nice person but Emmanuel come to me men have come to me they have their assessment of me even me there are things I believe about myself but come to me every time the God of the Bible shows up ladies and gentlemen stop giving him your head it is not your head is looking for lift your hands yes but it is not your hand that is looking for when the God of the Bible shows up it is not even your Bible don't bring your credentials and say I'm Joshua Selman he will not even call you apostle men can call you but when he comes you will think he will come with a great crown you will see him come with a lab coat and say lie down I came to perform a surgery that you are not even aware that you need and from that surgical table lost will be broken from that surgical table pride will be broken from that surgical table the ability to say no will be broken there, there are disconnections that happen there by the end of it ah, no wonder I now see it makes sense how a woman came out of man that God spoke for everything to come but when something serious was going to come out that would translate to fruitfulness he didn't just speak he said man lie down because what is coming out of you I will connect it to fruitfulness so lie down there is something I need to remove king of my life you are my all and I live for you alone the king of my life you have my all and I lay my life for you ladies and gentlemen can I tell you every time your spiritual activities stops or is not producing result the problem is not the activity the problem is that you bought a big fridge with no power connected to it you bought an LED screen imagine you bought all these gadgets in your house and then you now drop your orange drink in a beautifully you spent a million naira to buy that fridge but it's not connected to the light electricity your juice will spoil inside a fridge that should keep it well because the central processing system in a man's destiny is not your heart is your heart condition I want to show you one scripture I'm praying that someone will receive what I'm telling you this night and you will now see that most believers are trying to just fast blindly most believers are trying to just anoint themselves or looking for a man to anoint Gehazi receives the rod of Elisha sir and he says run with it a woman whose child died I am an anointed prophet my rod you have seen that rod collect the rod that a rod of power with a false heart condition equal disappointment he ran with that rod and dropped it on the child and was surprised like you ran with your Bible and said in Jesus name on it and nothing worked like you ran with the bottle of oil anointed by a genuine man of God you poured it on your head and the spirit still came mm. ladies and gentlemen the teaching of the heart condition of men is the first assignment or the, the encounter with the heart of men is the first assignment of God's presence we have focused today on power we just believe that God is so foolish that when he magically shows up all that he's trying to do when the average person falls down in church we think impartation not death and purification most people who fall under the anointing do not even know what God is doing 
Some of them just believe that a new anointing has come on me. No, it may be that he brought you closer to the surgical table so that something will begin to work in your heart. Hallelujah. Is, are we learning? Let me show you one scripture and then we'll pray. Second Chronicles 25, 1 and 2. Verse 2, in fact, let's just go to, okay, let's watch this. Go back to verse 1. I'll read verse 1, then I want us to shout verse 2 together. Are you ready? Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. Child of God, shout verse 2. Ready? One to read. And he did what was right in the sight. Uh-huh. One more time. Hmm. He prayed correctly, but something was wrong with his heart. He fasted correctly. It was not the, the activity. The activity was right. The singing was right. The going to church was right. The giving was right. The Bible study was right. Yet, he did not have the result. That in the economy of God, he looks beyond a man's activity. The first qualifier is your heart. Is someone learning? Yes. This is why you find out that God can come to an ordinary person and invest such dimensions of grace and favor. And when you look at them, they don't add up. You are even angry because calculating based on all you know, these people should not be there. There is something God has found about their heart. Every time you read in the Bible that God has found a man, what he found was the heart condition he was looking for. Learn it. Anytime the Bible says, I have found David, I have found this, I have found that. He is not saying I finally saw him. I've always seen him. But there is some, there's a heart condition I'm looking for. I finally found it. Hallelujah. I finally found it. Ladies and gentlemen, you will never be able to do great things for God. You will never be able to soar just by spiritual activities alone. Spiritual activities are wonderful, but they draw their power not just from who God is, but from the state of your heart. Oh God, give me money. Bless me. I know that if you give me money and you are wondering why you are tithing right, you are giving right, you are doing business right, and it looks like these doors of finances will not open. And then you will see somebody in the frailty of himself and he will say, Lord, I may not know much, but I want you to know that you can find a financial ambassador in me. And God says, I found it. And you will find out in one month, you will think this person went to do money laundry. And even the person himself, you will ask him, how did you rise? He will tell you, I can explain this part, but there is a part in this equation I cannot explain. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you, this is how some of us came on board, though. If it was by the sequence, the qualification, and the merit of men, some of us would still be far back in the queue. But we learned the foolishness of climbing on that surgical table. And we climbed early. And for some of us, we've tied ourselves there because we found out that that is the place of safety where the great physician has unlimited, unrestricted access to your heart. The more he touches your heart, the more you rise. It's a mystery. The more he touches your heart, the more you rise. My first assignment here tonight is to show you that there is an evidence when a man encounters God. You don't need to tell us you saw him. Just open up your heart and give us a chance to see. When we see him reflected in and through your heart, we know that you have met him. There are other signs of knowledge and favor and grace. We we'll discuss that one. But the Lord sent me here, Enugu State, House on the Rock, SOA Conference, that before we get into many other complicated spiritual things, tonight is a night where the great physician, God is not just coming as a mighty warrior, a miracle worker, a deliverer, he will do that. 
but have you noticed that as you kept dropping the prayer request it looked like nothing was happening is it not in your bible is my arm too short that i cannot save is it that my ear is too dull you know when you study the christian experience of many people they make you afraid of god in a negative way god is it that you are deaf you can't hear what does it take you to lift this family and god says i have bound myself to this covenant i must find a heart condition before i do much with men in your presence that's where i am strong in your presence that's where i belong in your presence oh lord my god in your presence you see let me tell you this there are many things we try to deal with in the body of christ mechanically they will never die until the owner of that heart allows god to walk that surgery this hate this pride don't say i'm like that is a lie you have not met god you are like that before you all of us are like that in our family we are just very proud people it's not true let the whole family come and meet god and that's when you will see that nobody's really like that listen one of the ways you know a matured christian is that the moment you see anything deficient in his life give him one month you will not find it again you know that this man has met god you see that now you see lust beginning to grow pride beginning to grow vain glory now soon you just you will not see him again for one week by the time he comes out there is a reset that has happened you will know that god visited this man when you see certain negative traits prolong is proof of the bankruptcy of, of an encounter with the presence of man the pride of last year is still there the wicked heart of last year is still there I don't care what kind of programs you have gone to you have not met the God of the Bible you see it is the heart condition when it is adjusted that makes all of us indeed look like brothers and sisters because culturally something has been imported in our hearts that will make our differences striking when you see an Igbo man, a Yoruba man, a man from the north, we have, with all due respect, luggages of things we have transported from everywhere. It is when all of us submit it in his presence. By the time God does a surgery on a Yoruba man, an Igbo man, a man from America, when we come out, our natural geography does not have power on us again. We all look like brothers and sisters because the same surgeon has worked on us. Are we together yes this is what it means to be a spiritual man ladies and gentlemen please hear me god is calling on all of us regardless our pedigree we must return back to this hard thing that is the epicenter this is where demons get empowered i can tell you the reason why we pray and bind and cast and pray and get angry at god and ourselves it's not because satan is that powerful but this is a mystery that has been hidden from many people continue activities and satan does not mind provided it does not touch your heart you keep doing it he does not mind your fasting go ahead and fast he does not mind your praying he does not even mind your bible study become a pastor graduate to anyone just continue but the moment you want to see the devil attack you surrender your heart to jesus let him hear that language lord take everything walk upon my heart you have declared war on the gates of hell because right now when that central processing system is adjusted every other thing loses its power i've studied the subject of deliverance i've studied the subject of prosperity rising lifting as why does god seem to lift other people and then it looks like other people remain at the lower levels of life in spite sometimes of their intellectual um, investments in spite of their exposure what is it about god what is he looking for in a man i read books i listened to many people i finally came to the conclusion that the one thing god is really looking for 
is not an able-bodied man else Eliab would have been king what God is looking for is not just utterance and eloquence that can be useful but when God comes to you here's what he says my son give me your heart is that in your Bible forget about trying to know my ways let me have your heart first here's how God would tell me when God began to deal with me on this he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you I'm not sure I understood the gravity of that statement when he said it that if you will let men see me am I covering men from seeing you what exactly are you looking for now I understand better if you can give me your heart if you can really surrender your heart and don't you think it is that easy nobody really has the power to give God his heart you only allow him to have access to it because your heart represents the epicenter of your self-worth giving God your heart means bringing to surrender everything that represents your pedigree your beauty your education when I talk about the heart I'm not talking about this thing pumping at the left side of your chest no I'm talking about that tray that you kept your reputation on I'm talking about that tray, that tray that you kept your anointing on that tray that you kept whatever on God says hand it over to me women you have certain safes in your house is that true where you keep expensive jewelries when you buy Dubai gold or you buy European or Middle Eastern gold so 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 carat gold you don't throw it on the table that holy of holies where you keep plates that are only for presidents and kings when God comes to you he says open the key to that drawer bring everything out drop it on the table that is what we call your heart I need to explain to you what the heart is this is not it when you say God take it even you you are lying because that is not your heart you want to know what your heart is ask Abraham his heart was Isaac your heart means many things to many people so for some when God comes your heart is your degree for another person your heart is your church you will not fool him by the diplomacy of uh, you know no your heart is everything you have invested your confidence upon that is your heart so when he comes to you he will say Abraham you waited for this child for 25 years here and then go and sacrifice him for another person if you are the rich man your heart the man increased the size of his heart and put all his money inside that was what made him a rich fool and God said today your soul is required for Saul it was his entire intelligence it had to come to naught for him to become an apostle for Jesus Christ it was his own life in fact for God it was Jesus he even God did not escape this you want fruitfulness and you want glory by yourself offer your son and Jesus came men of God as we're helping to raise the next generation of ministers let's not just keep doing impartation we're going to produce a casualty in the body of Christ we must lead these people to this process of purification where the heart condition charismatism does not equal ministry no 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 there has to be this circumcision of the heart can I tell you when the presence of God comes I assure you I some of you I hope you like this message because this is the kind of message where you pray on God will answer in a hurry including this night when God comes to you the first time he does not say take he stretches his hand there is something he came to carry it is when you give him that he can give you any other thing Jacob if it is the God of the Bible let me check if you are still complete it's not God he must touch something that balance must be altered so that he becomes your completion forever there are some of you God looks at you and he can say empty your account he does not need the money if he's looking for money it's not you he will call you talk to but it's because your heart was kept and you joined it with your ATM are we together now 
and God now says carry that as soon as that 30 million comes in it's not about the 30 million he says go and give he will not even say give a man of God you like he will mention the name and say drop it there God why are you doing this to me hmm. for someone else you can get a job that looks like an answered prayer and God says leave that job don't go there people will say you had a demon God will say I will speak as loud as you want I will give you visions I will give you prophetic confirmation so know it's me don't go there you bought your land you're about to dance and start building and God says carry that land you see that widow woman go and give her and don't announce it let nobody knows God is this what you are doing to me this is why it is not good to judge men you don't know that sometimes what you call tragedy is a surgery process in the spirit don't be too quick to help people because of sympathy you may be interrupting or resurrecting something God is trying to kill this man of God is it that God cannot give him money let me come and help him and God says no there is something I'm bringing out of him this man is in a furnace of affliction there is something I am birthing ladies and gentlemen this is how genuine power and grace is generated this is true both for a politician this is true for a businessman this is true for a man of God no matter what run away from people who do not have scars they are dangerous and they are a risk let no man trouble me is it not in your Bible for I bear in my body not just oil on my head there is a scar a testament that I died with Christ until your reputation dies everything that represents your heart at that point in the midst of that death like the king resurrected you will resurrect in a new life that is full of glory and grace most believers have not followed this pathway is the reason why we keep doing a lot of activities Lord I, 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 I should be a commissioner by now I should be this and that and God says no I'm not a fool I'm not stupid there is something you have refused to give me by the privilege of God's grace I pray for businessmen I pray for politicians and most times when they come as they are talking I'm looking at them respectfully I know what God is looking for but will they give him if he asks them it's easy to give Ishmael Isaac did not think in one day to dismiss Ishmael but Isaac no the epicenter of your self-worth is what he comes to take he does not take it to leave you bankrupt he takes it to become your completion did you hear what I said God does not come to take it listen for many years in my life you've heard my story God will not allow me buy a car God will not allow me move to a house I was a preacher and I was staying in one room it was not luck I was paying two bedroom three bedroom flat for people people will bring cars and God will say pray for them and take it back what kind of thing is this should I not be happy that I'm serving you if I sin against you okay I'm sorry allow me my life to move forward hallelujah we're wrapping up and for a long time I remember people who come and give gifts and give all kinds of things and the Lord will say pray on it and let them go can you be in one room you are paying two bedroom three bedroom flat for people I was coming from our miracle services those days with crowds of people in multiple folds like this and I will climb a bike my suit was more expensive than the bike it was not luck and yet I will climb the bike with my Bible don't just say people are anointed there is a story behind every glory there are people who you see when they call upon God it shows up because there is blood dripping on their altar a proof that the physician visited them hallelujah I remember the first day a woman came with a vehicle from Lagos and he's here my head of protocol he came to knock I was praying preparing for a miracle service and he said there's a gift I said from who I, or, I was already used to God saying maybe I should transfer it to someone I continued praying it was till I came back from church that I went to look at that guy I said Lord who is this for now he says no this will be your own now that was the beginning what was God achieving 
leave him oh. he's the one who knows what he saw in this heart you can like me too much to say god this is your unfair leave god when god is training men don't 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 be too sympathetic that you say Kai, no god is not you this lady you see this lady is so beautiful i mean any man just leave god he knows what he's working on did you hear what i'm saying allow god to do his dealing in your life by the time he's done you will now see it's like with all due respect maybe someone who has a fibroid or something you are standing and you are seeing your stomach flat and yet the machine will tell you you have five or six fibroids there you may not believe it till you go through that surgical bed by the time they sew you back and show you a bowl full of it you will say all these things were me no wonder I used to sense pain now the pain is gone because a surgery has happened there are many of us there are interruptions to the manifestation of the glory of God in our lives and God wants to do that circumcision even this night when God comes he does not only come to give he comes to take there are things he must take so that what he gives will make sense for you are we learning so for Isaiah something happened to him he was cleansed for Paul something happened to him and he became a, an apostle of the Lamb for you I don't know what God is going to take this night but let me advise you do not fear when he calls for it it may not make sense but trust him that out of that pain will come glory he says this for our light affliction which is but for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory he says while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are temporal but the things that are unseen are eternal the thing you are looking for god can give it to you freely we are going to pray and in this prayer is twofold just a minute each the first prayer is going to be a prayer of surrender you're going to say Lord I do not even know what is contained within my heart but now that I'm listening to you I want to soar do you not know that the lighter a plane is the higher it can fly there are times that they need to remove certain luggages because of the altitude that it must attain some of you need to pray and say Lord why is ministry limited in spite of my prayer my fasting I thought it's because I don't have revelation I've listened to messages and studied and yet it looks like people are not coming my influence is diminishing finances I can't be trusted with the resources of heaven I can tell you quit activities and go to the realm of surrender except if you will use those activities as a route to attain to a path of surrender but when God finds your heart ladies and gentlemen you have entered an oasis of unending glory the glory of god that will be smeared upon your life you will be the first wonder of that glory hallelujah are you ready to pray the first prayer will be with you seated then the second you will stand and will wrap up for tonight right where you are I want you to raise a cry in the next one minute to the God of heaven a cry from your spirit now it is not compulsory you can just wait for us to finish and share the grace or from the depth of your heart you can say Lord I know that there is a dimension of glory you seek to reveal in my life there is a level of rest prosperity influence power you want to cause my voice to be heard across the nations but I confess that this heart condition I do not even know the state of my heart as a preacher if I'm to assess myself I will say I am all right but you come the surgeon the judge of all the earth come and review my heart it says search my heart and try my thoughts if there is any wicked way in me then it says lead me to the way everlasting someone pray pray in one minute cry to the God of heaven some of you are outside across the overflows cry to the God of heaven within the next one minute help my heart oh God I do not know what is resident within therein but I cry to you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I hand over everything my heart and its content good or otherwise 
I submit my hand to the great physician to do that destiny work of purging, to do that destiny work of making, to do that destiny work of lifting. Emmanuel, you have come to me before we talk of empowerment, before we talk of enlightenment, let that purification happen within my heart. From that standpoint, let loss die. From that standpoint, let try die. From that standpoint, let an evil heart die. A forward lip die. Let a heart that is poised to doing evil, let it die. The central processing unit that powers darkness, that powers curses, that makes my prayer of non-effect, makes my fasting of non-effect. I pray, nothing happens. I fast, nothing happens. I study the Bible, nothing happens. I preach, nothing happens. I rebuke demons, nothing happens. It's not the activity that is wrong. It is that there is a wrong heart. The psalmist said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Ten more seconds. Break the power of curses. Not just by conducting a deliverance service. No. Break the power of curses. Break pride in me. Satan is not this powerful. The curses in my family are not this powerful. The spirits of witchcraft are not that powerful. Jesus died. He rose again. He defeated sin, hell, death and the grave. Why is the power of the cross? not working in my life i can tell you the problem is not lack of anointing the problem is not lack of fasting the problem is not lack of prayer the problem is not god's inability to lift you that circumcision has not yet happened oh you cannot defeat jericho joshua do not go around jericho until the circumcision happens the empowerment comes the strategy comes after the circumcision has happened go ahead and pray In the name of Jesus hallelujah now I've obtained permission to do two things very quickly I'm told that I have the honor to just pray for the state um, and then for the secretary but before then um, pastor has given me a minute to make an altar call you cannot have this kind of service and then just end without making an altar call now please even if it does not concern you let's respect those who are coming to Jesus in the next one minute I want to ask we may not have the space to have people come up here but I want someone who means business with Jesus that you are saying on hearing you apostle I confess sincerely I cannot say my heart is right with God and I do not want to live in a lie complicating my situation knowing that he's loved me so much to give his son to give himself you are in this place I'm going to ask you to rise as I count one to five and I want you to rise with boldness and with confidence you are saying I really want to make it right with Jesus no playing games here's what we'll do so that we do not maybe I'll ask one or two protocol to just stand here and then let me have the first few people from this call who can stand here once the front row is full then all other people can remain where they are you are making this call I'm counting one to five run from where you are come and stand here right now one once the front row is full once the front row is full that's the end of it please so you don't congest some of our dignitaries who are here once the front row is full you don't have to kneel you'll take up some space two Enugu are you celebrating salvation okay so the remaining can stand where you are Jesus is seeing you now look up please ladies and gentlemen I appreciate you for making this noble call but I can tell you just coming out alone does not translate to salvation hallelujah 
it is a declaration that you need Jesus let me request in one minute that you please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender and those within the overflows you can just walk to your LED screens following online you can connect with us as we pray this prayer say this after me as loud and as clear as you can say Lord Jesus I have heard your word I believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I confess that I cannot help myself I ask you to save me to cleanse me and to help me I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I decree and declare that from tonight I am a child of God I go for whatever and backward never amen let me pray for you father thank you for these ones who have come by the authority of scripture I decree and I declare that their sins are forgiven and in the name of Jesus I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God the grace to live the victorious Christian life is imparted upon you this moment you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in Jesus name I pray okay so here's what will happen I'm going to request that you return back to your seats rejoicing you are now safe based on the authority of scripture and every time there's there's okay I'm told that there's a telephone line okay there's a telephone line that will be on the screen just send an SMS to that line and there'll be a few officials to follow up with you let's honor them as they go back please can we put our hands together once again for these people who have um, I've been recruited into God's kingdom tonight we have a very important assignment um, by the grace of God we want to pray for Enugu state we have a new government that has come into power for just about a hundred days and we have seen the significant transformation that has taken place as a people we have a responsibility to pray for the leadership especially the new leadership of the state represented this tonight is a secretary to the state governor who is going to be coming up the stage on behalf of the state and we all are going to rise up together apostle will lead us in a prayer for Enugu state ladies and gentlemen with Jesus joy would you kindly help me receive upstage the secretary to the state governor professor dr. Chidi Onya please let's put our hands together as it comes up hallelujah praise the name of the Lord thank you it's an honor God bless you sir my honor thank you very much we're going to pray I am one person who believes in responsible citizenship no government on its own has the power to change any state I'm not a politician no matter how well intentioned it will take the partnership of the people together with the government and so I was asking um, Reverend I said how is Enugu state now and he spoke so positively about the new government I'm not a politician and if politicians don't do well I tell them in love if they do well I tell them in love so I am happy that this is happening and we're going to use this great man I believe he's in ministry in politics this is what I believe we're going to pray for the nation we're going to pray for any good state and we're going to ask using him as a point of contact that God will help this government that at the end of this government they will not walk away in shame that at the end they will say sincerely that they have served the people in truth can we pray that prayer please allow us to rise in honor of your state and you don't need to kneel sir you can just stand stretch your hands towards him representing the government and let's just pray pray from the depth of your heart sometimes we are given to complaining governments are not perfect they are humans they make mistakes but we must pray for them go ahead we are praying can you join me sir yes so we're going to pray I'm standing in faith with Reverend and we're praying for Enugu state using the secretary to the state government in the name of Jesus the first prayer go ahead we're praying is that the government in Enugu state will fear God when people do not fear God anything can go we're going to pray may God grant the government grace to fear God sincerely sincerely 
sincerely because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom number two that God will grant them extraordinary intelligence as they drive the state towards development towards transformation and then pray they have families they have needs they have challenges they will encounter genuine challenges on their journey challenges ranging from security economy education we are going to pray that God will honor them God will honor them that their human frailties will not tell on them in the midst of challenges are you praying in the name of Jesus we decree and declare using the secretary to the state government Lord let any good state be on the path to glory a path to grace and then pray that God will give them wise counselors the Bible says in the multitude of counsel there is safety we take away from the government the counsels of Ahitophel in the name of Jesus Christ psychophants and naysayers will not come just to sing praises to the detriment of the state that God will bring people who fear God and people who are men and women of integrity hallelujah and finally let's pray that God will anoint them Enugu is God's state do you believe that and you are going to say father we hand over these states to you and that includes the government go ahead and pray in the mighty name of jesus the son of the living god we hand over the government and all the parastatals under the government that under the watch of these uh, government officials that this state will experience advancement it will be one of the most advanced states in this nation in the name of jesus christ for in jesus name we pray father we stand as ministers of the gospel and we pray sincerely for the secretary to the state government using him to pray for the governor and all who are part of this lord we pray from our hearts that you will help them because except you help a man he cannot go forward the bible says by the arm of flesh no man can prevail they already have their challenges they have uh, the peculiarities that they have met as a government but grant them wisdom that they will fear you that they will honor you in the name of Jesus Satan we rebuke you take your hands away from this government you will not corrupt their testimony that under this government the young people will get jobs education will go forward security will be at its highest that the program of God will advance under them that the economy of this state will skyrocket that this state will soar in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father empower them and lord we pray that whilst they serve this state you will also lift them that none of them will serve and remain at this level that they will also have the opportunity to rise to higher levels of trust in the name of jesus therefore we declare that enugu is god's state and that it will only go forward ever and backward never this we pray in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.